Just as I said, our ministry has seen the significance of this problem for many years now. Our previous program concerned uh, inter municipal and intersectoral cooperation. And the reason we are doing that is uh, to simply more efficiently manage local affairs for the benefit of our inhabitants. So I would like to share deliberations with conclusions um, from participation in this seminar and also all the best as far as the cooperation beyond the boundaries goes. Thank you very much, um, Director. Now, over to Alexander Tinchuk, who is Special Ad Advisor for Local Democracy at the KS Association, our partner in Norway. Alexander, can you hear us? Yes, I hear you. Can you see my uh, presentation? Yes. Czy widzicie moją prezentację? Gdzie jest ta prezentacja? Nie dostałem jej. Poprosiłaś go? Tak, poprosiłam go i mi. Poprosisz go, proszę jeszcze raz. Miał wysłać i nie wysłał. Ja mogę zrobić teraz, jak coś to tam. Nie, 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 spoko, spoko, spoko. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes, okay, good. Thank you. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, these forums facilitated in a very professional way by the Association of Polish Cities uh, represent a unique opportunity to foster dialogue, share insights and build lasting partnerships between our two countries. As we navigate these uh, complexities of local governance, the exchange of knowledge and experience becomes even more crucial. Uh, throughout the day, we will engage in discussions on best practices, explore successful case studies, and identify common challenges and opportunities. But to provide some context to the presentation you will hear from my Norwegian colleagues uh, soon, I would like to take the opportunity to say a few words about intermunicipal cooperation in Norway. There are uh, 357 municipalities and 15 counties in Norway. Um, there's a great difference in the size of municipalities and municipal administration across the country. From the smallest municipality, Utsira, with its 217 inhabitants, to the capital of Oslo, with over 700,000 inhabitants. 49% of all Norwegian municipalities have less than 5,000 inhabitants. At the same time, the Norwegian municipal system is built around the generalist principle, which implies that all municipality, municipalities have equal responsibilities by law. Thus, the municipality of Utsira must fulfill the same tasks and functions as the capital Oslo. Uh, it is well documented that Norwegian municipalities have some challenges in fulfilling their statutory responsibilities, and that these challenges are systematically greater the smaller the municipalities are. A tool that is widely used to compensate for capacity and competence challenges in municipalities is intermunicipal cooperation. It is the Norwegian Local Government Act which regulates intermunicipal cooperation. Munis municipalities and county authorities may carry out joint tasks through intermunicipal cooperation, and intermunicipal cooperation shall take place through an intermunicipal political council, municipal task community, host municipal cooperation, intermunicipal company, a, liabil a limited liability company or corporate cooperative, or as an association or in other manner uh, that is legal legally permissible. Uh, and all the regional municipalities participate in one or more intermunicipal co collaborations. Uh, due to um, a recent municipal reform with municipal mergers and a clarification of the Local Government Act regarding intermunicipal co collaboration in 2019, 
We lack good data on the number of intermunicipal collaborations in Norway. However, however, in the survey from 2021 and 2022, over half of the municipalities responded that they use intermunicipal collaboration within eight of the service areas where intermunicipal co collaboration is most frequently used. And as we see from this chart, the most common areas of collaboration are revision, crisis centers for people who are exposed to violence in close relationships, fire and rescue, out of hours medical centers, etc. And with this uh, short presentation, uh, I intended to provide uh, some insight into intermunicipal cooperation in Norway. Uh, the presentations from my colleagues will give you uh, a more in-depth uh, introduction and example examples of such cooperation. And with that, I wish you an interesting and instructive day, and I look forward to the fruitful exchanges and inspiring conversation that will undoubtedly uh, emerge from this uh, forum. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, Thomas, let us, uh, let us go to you and hear about those experiences. So, uh, once again, thank you very much for uh, the invitation to this panel. Let us move on to the uh, clue of today's uh, meeting, and let's start with the broader perspective. Uh, we have 10 years of experience in the Association of Polish Cities, and this is uh, what uh, Jorge Konja is going to uh, talk about in his presentation. Uh, he's an expert on the Association of Polish Cities, and he's also the coordinator for uh, advisory projects. He has also been a part of Polish Nor uh, Norwegian uh, projects. Uh, like I said, he has been a part of the advisory uh, team and has advised for over 800 uh, municipalities in Poland. So, uh, and as you can see, this is quite a big uh, experience that he has. And let me uh, give the floor to Jaroslaw. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jaroslaw Konja. I will represent the expert team of the Association of the Polish Cities. Uh, today, I will discuss uh, with you our 10 years of experience in supporting inter intermunicipal uh, cooperation. Uh, so, uh, to uh, help me illustrate this um, this topic, I will share a presentation with you now. And so, ladies and gentlemen, it has now been uh, 10 years since we uh, began consciously and um, expertly assisting Polish local governments in uh, supporting, initiating, fostering, and solidifying the uh, intermunicipal uh, cooperation. So now allow me to uh, briefly explain uh, how we do it, how we operate. So first and foremost, uh, we carry out various advisory projects uh, that are aimed at uh, municipal partnerships, and uh, they are financed from uh, various sources. And these projects are commissioned by uh, entities such as the Polish Ministry of uh, Finance uh, and uh, Regional Policy. And here you can see uh, two examples of such uh, projects. One of them was carried out between 2014 and 2016. It was also co-funded by the um, so-called uh, Norwegian Financial uh, Mechanism. And the most recent one, uh, which we completed not uh, long ago, it was funded um, by the EU Technical Assistance Program funds and implemented in 2022 and 2023 under the uh, acronym uh, CWD uh, in, in Poland. Uh, you are likely familiar uh, with that uh, project right now. So in both advisory projects, as you can see, we have provided support to a large number of municipal partnerships, uh, collectively um, the grouped um, entries of local governments. And in the case of the CWD project, this included uh, 771 municipalities. And thus, and the experiences that we draw from these projects are truly um, on a large scale. And the second method involves um, um, translating the conclusions and recommendations from our project experiences uh, with you into proposals for illegal changes in local government uh, law. As, the, uh, as an example, now the, uh, this here we have the act on, on the principles of development policy which consolidates uh, legal aspects related to cooperation. But it's not just this piece uh, of, uh, of, of the legislation here. It also includes acts regulating cohesion policy and others. Uh, so 
in particular. One an example of such solution is the concept of an integrated project, uh, which entered the framework of the current regional policy period and was developed through a practical work in the CWD project. Now, the th uh, third method is consulting on, on the programmatic uh, dimension of Poland's regional development um, policy. So what do, what do I mean by that? For instance, um, our active participation in the uh, preparation and consultation of various programs and strategies, uh, such as uh, long-term national development strategies or local government issues, cooperation and uh, territor uh, territorialization uh, of policy are addressed. Uh, or uh, another example is uh, the national strategy for regional uh, development. Uh, so uh, let me draw your attention to the starting premise that we adopted 10 years ago. Yeah, and that premise was that local governments should cooperate with one another. Now, back then, we operated under the assumption that cooperation was essential to ensure the uh, economic potential needed to meet the growing needs and aspirations of residents. So note these two aspects, should and economic. This was the thesis and the premise and conviction that we started with. Uh, so, uh, as you can see uh, on this slide here, through our experiences, um, uh, this thesis has significantly evolved and expanded. Uh, today, we begin uh, with the understanding that polycentricity, um, meaning the network of uh, cities in Poland, is an asset of its uh, spatial structure and also a critical element of regional uh, development policy. Among these cities, medium-sized cities play a particularly important role. Uh, a distinctive type of uh, functional area, a concept that has uh, firmly established itself both in uh, policy discourse and in the methodology of the spatial and regional development policy is the functional urban area. So with this uh, framework, the municipal and functional area um, um, holds special significance. Uh, now, take a look at the next uh, statement. Uh, Ten years ago, we said that local governments should cooperate. Today, we are convinced that they must cooperate to ensure the economic potential needed to meet the growing needs and aspirations of their residents. However, there is also another um, aspect um, of, uh, inter um, of um, uh, intermunicipal uh, cooperation. Um, uh, it is uh, now one of the prerequisites for ensuring the safety of residents and enhancing the resilience of local government administrations to various crises. Now, these crises, which we uh, observe today, affect our countries and um, individual local governments alike. Uh, so what is the current state of uh, intermunicipal cooperation? Well, as we see it, uh, cooperation between local governments is, at present, uh, primarily initiated externally. Uh, this uh, cooperation is motivated primarily or almost exclusively by the possibility of um, obtaining additional funds, mainly cohesion funds and EU policy funds, and uh, primarily for individual projects. And this is largely due to the so-called territorial, uh, territorial instrument uh, mechanism, which imposes uh, certain solutions a priori. So, yeah, first, uh, local governments are required to establish a partnership within a specific uh, legal framework, choosing one of uh, the three forms permitted under the Polish uh, regulations. So, an uh, intermunicipal agreement, a municipal association, or a municipal or a municipal county union. Secondly, these local governments must develop a, a joint development strategy for the partnership area. And um, uh, third, within the you know, this strategy, they need to prepare a package of projects uh, eligible for funding from a given regional program of, uh, or EU funds. Uh, and, and all of that uh, has to be uh, reviewed and approved by the managing authority of the program, which means the respective um, vibratorship of the province uh, government. Now, these three uh, significant aspects currently you know, motivate and define the framework of intermunicipal cooperation. This is uh, what the reality is today. And a common example of, um, uh, of it is uh, the Integrated Territorial uh, Investments, or the ZIT in, uh, in Polish. So the, the ZIT mechanism has its advantages and, and disadvantages, obviously. Uh, unfortunately, there are very few integrated projects or partnership uh, projects, while the majority are individual uh, by single uh, municipalities. 
Uh, so, uh, the mechanism of uh, territorial cooperation as well as the implementation mechanisms for uh, territorial instruments still leave something to be uh, desired, but uh, how do we envision, um, um, how do we think it should function? Well, first, uh, the intermunicipal cooperation should be initiated from the bottom up by local authorities, uh, which means ones that are fully aware of the functional connections between the uh, municipalities. Moreover, these authorities should have conducted an inventory on the, or, uh, on the one hand uh, of the potential of the entire functional area, not just um, individual muni uh, municipalities, and on the other of the problems that need to be addressed, problems that cross administrative boundaries. Uh, secondly, uh, cooperation uh, should not be uh, limited only to individual uh, projects. Instead, it should aim for joint planning, for joint uh, organization and implementation of the public services across the entire functional area. Uh, and all of that should be based on a previously development integrated uh, development strategy for the area as a whole. So these are the two key components, two key conditions uh, of the uh, desired future uh, state. So the first uh, component is the cooperation that's initiated from the bottom up. And the second one is cooperation that is not solely focused on projects, or at least not only on projects. Um, is while implementing development uh, initiatives, um, uh, that is certainly not a bad thing, quite, uh, quite the opposite. Cooperation should center on the pursuit of joint uh, planning, uh, organization, and implementation of um, public services. Uh, so what conclusions have we drawn from our experience in working with local governments regarding uh, the key conditions for initiating, sustaining, and maturing uh, the intermunicipal uh, cooperation? Well, firstly, uh, there must be someone to take the initiative, an initiator, and at the same time, an animator uh, of the cooperation. This is usually a formal leader, such as uh, a leader uh, of one of the local governments, uh, but sometimes it is also an uh, informal leader, for instance, the uh, president of a local social uh, organization. However, this person must uh, possess uh, widespread credibility and influence over local uh, authorities. Uh, the uh, second uh, condition is the openness uh, of attitude among the local uh, leaders uh, that are intended to collaborate, or at least among the majority of them. Uh, these leaders should be capable of persuading and encour encouraging others um, within the functional area using the language of benefits to establish such a partnership. The third critical condition is the knowledge and skills of local government uh, employees, both the leaders and the uh, operational staff. This is a topic that I will go back to uh, later. So these are the three key factors for initiating and sustaining cooperation. Uh, but now, what challenges await us in the near future? Uh, what are the conditions necessary to maintain uh, cooperation among Polish local governments in the coming uh, period? Well, the first one is education, second, um, also education, and third, also education. Uh, this means educating leaders, particularly in raising awareness uh, of the need and, and uh, necessity for intermunicipal cooperation as it has become an absolute uh, prerequisite for, su for survival today. It also involves teaching the skills required to build such cooperation, um, what we often call uh, soft skills or soft competencies for establishing and nurturing uh, relationships. It would also be beneficial to equip leaders with at least a foundational knowledge, uh, ideally a competent grasp, of course, um, but at least a foundation of some strategic uh, management principles. Uh, education is also a crucial aspect for local government staff, particularly mid and lower level administration employees. Local government's uh, workers should also be uh, equipped with skills that enable them to independently monitor the socioeconomic economic and spatial situation across the entire functional area and develop uh, giant development projects. And these projects should genuinely address previous, um, previously identified deficits and problems uh, while uh, leveraging uh, local potential rather than being artificially tailored to specific uh, funding sources. And so thus, 
uh, the first uh, priority is education for both uh, leaders and staff. Uh, uh, but secondly, an, an important aspect is motivating a local government specialists. Uh, all of us here, uh, mayors, town managers, uh, city presidents, uh, that um, our, uh, participants of this forum uh, know how difficult it is to recruit competent individuals, let alone um, retain them long term. Experience shows that high staff turnover in local governments can be incredibly destructive to partnership cooperation, sometimes even more so than uh, changes in leadership or the political shifts inherent in the democratic uh, cycle. And uh, finally, promoting intermunicipal cooperation is another vital aspect that is achieved through uh, initiatives such as the ones uh, we undertake uh, within the um, uh, framework, uh, but uh, also through the exchange uh, of experiences uh, among uh, stakeholders and, and through implementing various uh, projects. Uh, but like I said, the exchange of experiences is uh, crucial. After all, this is um, uh, only through example uh, that one can learn. Uh, thirdly, a highly important uh, internal factor for the sustainability of um, partnerships linked to both the uh, educational and personnel aspects is the uh, establishment of uh, partnership offices. By this, I don't mean a specific building, but a structured team, rather, um, ideally a mixed uh, one, a mixed team uh, that would comprise of uh, employees from uh, several municipalities or counties uh, for, uh, that would form the partnership. Uh, these individuals would focus almost exclusively on managing and fostering the development of the partnerships. A particularly effective organizational structure we recommend is to uh, formalize such operational cooperation uh, through the uh, shared services center mo uh, model, not within a single municipality, but as a center that would serve uh, the entire functional area or partnership. External support is also essential, whether from the government or regional authorities. Each level can contribute in different ways. On the government side, and more broadly from, uh, from the parliament side, uh, it is especially important to provide systematic uh, support uh, that is real and perceptible to local governments. Uh, this should, of course, be, uh, be enshrined in law. I am primarily referring to bonuses and financial uh, incentives for cooperation. Support from uh, regional authorities can be provided, for instance, by establishing a dedicated team uh, of employees or even a uh, single employee within the marshal's office, uh, perhaps in the department dealing with the region's uh, development strategy or in the uh, department responsible for cohesion policy. Uh, this employee would be responsible uh, solely for assisting and in initiating and developing partnerships, uh, acting as the primary point of contact. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, I have shared our experiences with you uh, in just a few minutes and how we uh, approach the beginning, how these experiences have evolved, uh, what uh, are the key conditions for a municipal uh, cooperation and what challenges we foresee uh, for this uh, cooperation uh, in the future. Since we have been doing this for 10 years, um, we are eager to see the results of our joint efforts as soon as possible. However, we also have the belief that uh, the development of intermun intermunicipal cooperation among Polish local governments is much like other long-term uh, processes. And this brings to mind a more personal, uh, professional reflection. Many years ago, uh, while working in my hometown, uh, in my hometown, uh, uh, we initiated cooperation with uh, French local governments in, in the Burgundy region and signed a partnership agreement with one of uh, those municipalities, with one of those local governments. Um, and uh, uh, to my surprise at the time, it turned out that we, as a city, uh, were signing an agreement not with uh, another city, but with a communal association. Uh, back then, I did not uh, understand this uh, at all. And why was uh, that the case? Uh, only after delving into uh, this issue and, uh, and learning why the partners had uh, formed the uh, communal um, association to address local issues, uh, did I understand why, uh, why that was. Uh, it involved a group of 
In several French municipalities in a post-mining area, an area suffering from industrial decline, uh, where a single large factory had been the backbone of the local economy, similar to the situation in my own town, uh, in my own hometown, uh, Gerardo. Uh, they concluded that on, only by uniting their forces could they overcome these problems, uh, leveraging their own, their own local potentials. Uh, the chairman of the uh, communal association, uh, the mayor of one of the uh, towns um, forming this, uh, this association, there was Lazio, uh, greeted us with genuine pride, uh, which was evident in his eyes and his entire uh, demeanor. Uh, and he said with uh, full authenticity, uh, dear Polish friends, we started our work 20 years ago and we are already halfway uh, there. Um, I dedicate this last sentence to all of us who are passionate about seeing uh, municipal uh, cooperation develop as quickly as uh, possible. <clears throat> so, ladies and gentlemen, um, dear colleagues, we are on the right uh, path. Uh, we will certainly move um, from this um, embryo phase uh, based uh, on cooperation on individual projects and primarily motivated by external funding to the develop mature phase uh, where we will think about how to plan, organize, and how, uh, how to jointly provide public services in a single you know, functional area for our residents. I wish this for both uh, myself and for you. And certainly uh, we are at the Union of uh, Polish uh, Cities uh, and uh, we will support you in that. Thank you very much for your attention and see you soon. Przybliżenie ostatnich 10 lat doświadczeń polskich samorządów w zakresie współpracy, tworzenia partnerstw, które przedstawił nasz kolega Jarosław Komża, ale też w nawiązaniu do tej końcowej jego refleksji, którą przedstawił, no, można powiedzieć, że współpraca partnerska jest liczona dziesięcioleciami i nasi partnerzy norwescy mają wielokrotnie dłuższy staż w tym zakresie, a jednocześnie podstawą naszej współpracy jest wzajemne uczenie się. Jarek wspominał o tych swoich doświadczeniach wiele lat temu z samorządami francuskimi, a my teraz przybliżymy doświadczenia... French municipalities go and now we will share with you some newest examples. Uh, it will be uh, about uh, Dremen. Um, there, Ansen uh, is with us and he's going to talk about uh, intermunicipal cooperation uh, in Dremen. This is a region that is uh, south uh, east uh, from Oslo, just for you, so that you can locate it on the map of Norway. Can you hear me? Can you see me? We have to connect with Norway. Are you there? Yes, hello. Uh, can you hear hello. me? Jean. Hello. Can, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. And can you see my presentation? Yes. Very good. Thanks. Okay. So am I ready to go? Yes, floor is yeah. yours. Okay, thank you so much. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Doug Anensen. I work as a regional coordinator in Drammen region, uh, which is located uh, just south of uh, Oslo. Um, so this is where we are. Uh, in Norway, as a total, we have approximately 70 inter-municipality -munici corporations working in Norway. And the main uh, goal of the municipality, inter-municipality corporation is in some areas with very small municipalities to re replace the function of a larger city responsibilities. So through cooperation, we are able to um, agree on areas that are of common interest, strategic interest between the smaller municipalities. And some of the inter-municipality corporations uh, also have a large city connected to smaller cities. Uh, 
Uh, one example would be the Oslo intermunicipality region. Uh, this consists of uh, 56 uh, municipalities in total, representing about 2 million people. Uh, whereas Drammen region is like a smaller sub-region with 182,000 inhabitants. So we are quite new as an intermunicipality region. We were established in April 2022. And as already said by my colleague from KS, according to the Norwegian law of municipality. So if two or more municipalities should cooperate, they have to establish uh, an alliance. So this is a political organ um, with a board of representatives, four mayors, um, and we also uh, have like a deputy and a leader elected for two years period. So we take turns being the, the leader of the, of the region. And then you have me, myself, uh, working as a secretary for the uh, board of representatives. Um, these are the names of the municipalities uh, in Norway. I will not go through them, but in total, as I said, we have 182,000 inhabitants, and uh, we also have a quite a large area of uh, business area that we can um, uh, develop business in, in the region. Now, this is maybe difficult to understand in Polish, but um, I'll explain in English. Um, organization, uh, we have the municipality, uh, the, the mayors in the representation, uh, the board uh, on the top. And then uh, just beneath that, uh, we have the secretary, which is me. And um, then we have three working groups one for business development, the second for power. Uh, even if we have a lot of power in Norway through dyno power production, uh, we still have some shortage, shortage of power in some areas. So it's important for us in our region to work together uh, around the power issues. Uh, so we have one group for power, one for climate and environment, and the third for building competence in the region. So uh, representatives from the different municipalities administrations will form a group of uh, business development, the second group for uh, climate environment, and the third group for uh, competence uh, education. And they will meet together with me, and then I will uh, bring the cases in front of the, the board of directors for um, um, solutions and, and decisions making. These are some of the strategic focus areas that we have agreed upon. Uh, number one is uh, to have a green business development in the region and also combined with the social development. So we cooperate uh, on the business establishment. Uh, we also cooperate within the health industry. The Drummond will have a new uh, hospital open next year, uh, and that will be about 5,000 people working on a daily basis in the hospital uh, and around 4,000, 4,500 patients. So the health industry is an important area for our region. Then we are very uh, concerned about uh, the, the green change and the um, circular economy in the region, that we can actually manage the waste better and, uh, and also how to use the, the power in a, in a smarter way to uh, make the circular changes we need 
to become more green. And and uh, net zero city, uh, I will I will come back to that later. Uh, we also have a large cooperation within agriculture. Uh, in this region, we produce about 20% of all the greens and the fruit and vegetables that uh, provide uh, Norway with uh, food. Uh, we have the second area, which is uh, future competence, both for business and government municipalities. Uh, and, and the third is uh, for making an attractive region for uh, both businesses and the residents. So these are like three areas that we uh, have a strategy to work together within. Um, I would say that um, we have a few uh, areas of cooperations that has been successful. Uh, so far, we have been mapping all the business areas and divided them into three categories. Uh, a, B, C, like an A category is typical for uh, residential uh, offices uh, close to the city. You have public transport to these areas, while uh, an example of a C area would be an indus industrial area where you would need a car to, to uh, transport uh, back and forth to this area. So we have divided the business areas into categories. So when we have businesses that want to establish uh, business in, in our region, we know exactly what property and area uh, to offer to them. We are also working together on a regional strategic business plan for the next four years. Uh, and this is, uh, uh, this is a very, very interesting area to work within for, for us, as we have a lot of um, uh, good area to offer and also good businesses uh, to develop and the businesses that we want into the region. To, to grow uh, the number of uh, workers. Uh, we have a, a regional resource group uh, for the power uh, and to develop a power strategy. Uh, we also have a circular economy group uh, working with the waste management uh, and how sun power plants can, um, can develop uh, within the, uh, the region. Another area, as I already mentioned, is agriculture um, area where we have a, a close cooperation. Um, uh, I will just conclude uh, with informing you that uh, Drammen was uh, selected as a net zero city in the Horizon program, uh, EU program, uh, together with uh, 52 other pilot cities. Uh, we uh, have developed uh, seven uh, different projects, uh, which are all regional, uh, mostly run by uh, one of the largest municipalities, Drammen, uh, in combination with uh, Academia and, and, uh, and, and the business alliances in the region. So uh, we have a, a triple helix approach as we uh, uh, made the application to, uh, to the Net Zero City program. And we were awarded uh, 1.5 million euros for uh, these projects that you can see here uh, mentioned um, from one to five. Uh, so uh, these are circular business models that we develop, solar energy projects, uh, riverside scientific papers that uh, have been uh, worked out by the uh, Academia University in Drammen. Uh, VR based intervention nature, just to make, uh, you know, mention a few of them. So this has really uh, brought something new to our region. And uh, we, um, we, we are happy with a combination of a triple helix approach towards projects that can benefit the region as a whole. Thank you so much for your attention. This is uh, what I have uh, in conclusion. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, Tak, thank you very much for your oh, presentation. Yeah, we can now hear the speaker. Great. Right. Your, yeah. your activities. Dziękuję bardzo Dagowi za bardzo 
szerokie, przekrojowe pokazanie. Uh, talk uh, about the good examples of uh, cooperation um, among the uh, local government representatives and, municip and municipalities. Um, the example of Dzierżoniów uh, frequently um, uh, comes up. Uh, so we have many years of uh, experience. Um, today we have the 10th anniversary of that uh, cooperation. And so uh, it is only natural that we uh, invite a person who has initiated this um, uh, this cooperation and um, knows a lot uh, about it, specifically Mr. Mayor Dariusz Kucharski, uh, who I, I would like to give the floor to now. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, hello to all of you from uh, Dzierżoniów, our uh, uh, I will uh, perhaps in, um, uh, uh, introduce our location to our friends from Norway. Uh, we are uh, at the south of uh, Poland, uh, specifically in the lower Silesia uh, region, the capital of which is the city of Wrocław. Uh, we are uh, 50 kilometers from uh, Wrocław. No, so uh, I hope you more or less know now where we are. And thank you very much for inviting me to this uh, conference today. Uh, the uh, the previous uh, presentations that we have uh, heard uh, definitely show uh, the last uh, 10 years of uh, cooperation, and, I, uh, and I'm very satisfied to say that uh, after those uh, 10 years uh, of cooperation, we definitely um, fit into this um, uh, this framework uh, of cooperation. And I'm very happy to uh, to see that. Mm. Also, in Dzierżoniu. Uh, 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 so uh, all of the local government uh, questions uh, are, are definitely uh, covered in our area, uh, and I'm very well familiar familiar with them. So um, uh, especially after I have been appointed uh, mayor, and uh, I have been dealing with that for, uh, very extensively. Mm -hmm. uh, also with Mr. Tomasz uh, Urbański, uh, we have uh, talked about these topics um, uh, of cooperation back then, and we also uh, keep uh, introducing that uh, now. Uh, obviously, the time for um, the partnerships comes uh, when it's needed, and only together can we uh, achieve uh, specific successes that uh, alone would not be uh, possible, uh, and that would benefit uh, all the inhabitants of the Dzierżoniów um, uh, area. Uh, we have um, uh, started the, the cooperation in December of 2014. Uh, back then, we have uh, started the cooperation between various associations. Uh, um, within the intermunicipal um, association, like I said, uh, and uh, at the time it uh, seemed like the best um, uh, solution for uh, for Dzierżaniu, um, to enter that uh, association, and uh, definitely that uh, decision proved to be uh, to be. Uh, quite beneficial because already in 2015 my colleagues have been convinced um, uh, that uh, that this was a step in the right direction uh, also the the um, Dzierżoniu uh, area association has been uh, registered and we have started our official uh, operation I will uh, take the liberty to, to go through the presentation here uh, so that you can better uh, understand our um, uh, geographical and, and geodemographic conditions. Mm. So uh, here you can see the lower Silesia uh, region uh, where we are, and specifically the Dzierżoniów uh, County. Uh, we have uh, just under 100,000 uh, inhabitants. The area is 479 uh, square kilometers. Uh, like I said, we are composed of seven uh, municipalities, um, and the whole um, uh, the whole uh, big area here the, that you can see is uh, is the county. Uh, Dzierżoniów is the um, the smallest um, in its area because uh, it is only 20 uh, square kilometers, but nevertheless uh, it plays a very important role. Uh, we also have the uh, rural uh, municipality of Pieszyce uh, of 10,000 uh, inhabitants. Um, uh, here you can see a timeline uh, of our uh, cooperation. So 
uh, you know, uh, how we started, how, how the cooperation has formed. So uh, what I already mentioned, 2014, we have made the decision to start the, uh, the partnership. Then uh, 2015, the establishment of the association. And 2016, we have already set up uh, the um, uh, cooperation uh, office. <clears throat> Obviously, uh, all of the procedural uh, works uh, take a lot of time, especially in Poland. Perhaps they take too much time, but uh, nevertheless, we were able to uh, to go forward. And in 2016, uh, until uh, until now, we um, uh, we keep on operating. Um, uh, and 2016 is the uh, date where our um, let's say logistic uh, operation has actually uh, started. We have um, employed uh, more people in that year as well. Uh, and the uh, the director of the association who has been uh, appointed uh, back then is the director uh, until uh, today. Uh, so uh, from 2016 until this uh, this very moment, and uh, ho hopefully in the future as well, we uh, develop and we will continue uh, to uh, develop. Uh, we have uh, 13 uh, employees uh, of that office right now, uh, and all of those employees uh, do wonderful work. In the eight uh, municipalities that we uh, that we operate, uh, I suppose uh, there are perhaps around 30, uh, 30 uh, employees um, in in total, and, and obviously all of them are very very engaged in their own uh, respective uh, municipalities, and they all put in the joint effort uh, for our common cause. Uh, so uh, here I have the uh, the most important areas. Uh, that, that that we cover and that uh, I would like to tell you in what areas we uh, we operate. So uh, first we have education, sport, um, uh, economy, um, uh, environmental protection, re uh, re revitalization, and thermal modernization. Um, then we have uh, street lighting as well. And the uh, the area that was the reason for the founding of the association in 2014 was um, getting the joint funds from uh, from external sources, so uh, specifically from the uh, EU, but also from the uh, governmental programs and non-governmental uh, programs as well. Uh, we also got um, uh, subsidies from uh, from uh, Swiss projects. Uh, so in total. Um, from the programs that were promoted by the uh, by the Polish uh, governments, we wanted uh, this association well first to be formed and then to be funded from uh, from those uh, programs, uh, and also from international sources. Here on the slide, uh, you can see at the bottom uh, 108 million uh, Polish zloty. Uh, this is the total uh, sum of money that we have uh, received in uh, subsidies. No. So this is quite a, a quite a substantial amount that we were able to receive, for example, through various applications, and and so on. Obviously, we have to divide uh, that sum uh, into our respective units, and only then can it be properly uh, implemented within our uh, association. Uh, but uh, since our region has only about 100,000 inhabitants, this is uh, still a very substantial sum of money. So here you can see another graph that uh, shows the progression of the subsidies uh, over the years. Uh, so uh, you can see that, that in 2015 we have started uh, basically from zero, uh, and then 2016-17 we got uh, about um, uh, 25 uh, uh, million uh, zloty. And then uh, it increased uh, as the years uh, went on. So this uh, this curve here uh, on the graph shows you uh, the development of the associations, and it shows the effects of various uh, also meetings and uh, and endeavors that we have uh, taken on. So the uh, the sum of money that we uh, receive continues to grow, thankfully. Uh, and it shows that the uh, association actually has a purpose that it uh, uh, that it makes sense uh, for it to uh, to exist uh, the uh, the people who have been in charge of specific municipal uh, units obviously had their um, uh, their uh, own personal and, and political sentiments, but they were able to uh, to put m most of them aside uh, for the uh, joint cause. And the uh, and so, uh, despite our uh, political differences, we were able to uh, to uh, come together. And so far, I uh, have uh, received not one uh, signal that. Um, uh, 
uh, that uh, anything is amiss, that uh, that uh, anything is uh, is wrong uh, in the operation of our association. So we continue to work uh, together. Next uh, slide here. I, I would like to uh, show you the consultation point of the government's uh, clean air program. And this is one of the major areas uh, of our cooperation. Um, uh, we have uh, also uh, gained new uh, possibilities for coming together for um, uh, for uh, developing the the association. Um, but uh, as you will see later on the slide, uh, we also cooperate uh, in in many different subjects, in many different um, areas. Uh, so that uh, we don't have to, you know, resort to uh, to other. Mm, to other means, to, to other uh, uh, consortiums, uh, to mm, uh, to get uh, the money, we are able to uh, to do it uh, on our own as we did. So in 2023, uh, the government has launched the Clean Air Program, and our uh, municipalities, um, uh, individual municipalities, signed a contract with the ministry, uh, and based on that, they uh, they received the funding. So we definitely wanted to take a slice of, of that cake, and uh, all of our municipalities were able to to sign that uh, that agreement with the ministry. Um, uh, uh, there have been consultations, um, uh, and based on that consultations here, you can see there were four thousand three hundred fifty nine of them uh, that were provided, and based on that, um, uh, we have uh, received the proper subsidies, and we have also sub submitted four hundred forty one applications. Um, and we uh, have, have applied for, uh, we, have, we have requested uh, um, almost 12 million, uh, 12 million zloty, so 11.8, uh, more or less, um, we have received uh, 3.8 uh, uh, of that requested uh, amount. Um, and uh, uh, the uh, uh, the majority of that investment uh, obviously will be uh, later um, in benefit of the um, of its final uh, recipients. Yeah, so uh, the uh, second program here that we have um, uh, taken part a part in is uh, the government uh, well, warm home program. Um, and the uh, the goal of the program was the improvement of um, of air quality and reduction of the emission of dusts uh, and greenhouse gases through uh, the replacement of heat sources in uh, in households. Mm, uh, so uh, again, uh, we have um, uh, uh, we have uh, uh, re requested um, 3.2 million zloty. Uh, we have received um, three, um, uh, around 400 thousand zloty, 386. Uh, thousands. So um, the effect of that uh, project was the reduction of pollution across the whole, uh, the whole uh, county. In a minute, I will also uh, tell you a little bit more uh, about, um, uh, about that program. The most important thing is that it was very beneficial for our region, uh, definitely, um, in terms of the reduction of, uh, of emissions. Ladies and gentlemen, the association uh, continues to function, obviously, but now we have a new uh, EU directive uh, that we as the Dzierżaniu uh, County um, try to fit in, uh, fit into, uh, because our regional uh, program has to be uh, considered um, as the ZIT instrument uh, that we have also heard um, during uh, one of the previous uh, presentations. So this is an instrument that, of course, allows us to get the subsidies uh, more easily and uh, therefore realize the projects more, uh, more easily. Um, uh, and we are uh, aware enough and uh, we agree enough uh, that we are uh, are able to kind of um, uh, delegate uh, tasks to our respective um, units, um, uh, and therefore uh, we are able to uh, operate. So we have applied um, uh, to to this project as well, uh, and here you can see on the uh, next slide the details of that application and the territorial investments um, of the south functional uh, area. The territorial investments are, uh, is the ZIT instrument that I mentioned. So 
the application included our um, um, county, the, the uh, Dzierżynia County, but also uh, the county of Kłodzko and of Ząbkowice. Mm, this was the whole area included in the uh, application. Of course, we had many discussions, many consultations, uh, both uh, social and economic, mm, uh, but uh, eventually our, uh, um, uh, our territorial investment instrument has been uh, included in the uh, Lower Silesia uh, strategy. Mm, and uh, currently the finances at our disposal um, uh, of the whole project is uh, 119 uh, million euro, mm, a bit over that, uh, that sum. Uh, the uh, ERDV fund is um, uh, over three, uh, uh, 33 million euro, then uh, um, ESF is um, over 5 million euro, and then the joint, uh, the just transition fund is um, over 80 million euro, almost 81 million euro. Mm. And we, as the Dzierżynia uh, County and uh, County of Polsko and Zokrovice, also are beneficiaries of, uh, of the just uh, transition uh, fund. No, because uh, we, uh, as the region, are very closely tie, uh, tied to the mining uh, industry, and so uh, therefore we are able uh, to get that uh, subsidy for that uh, transition or transformation um, uh, to uh, adjust to the current times. So any uh, questions rela uh, related to the energy sector, uh, this is what we can get the money uh, for. Uh, but coming back to the uh, previous slide, thanks to the um, uh, to the uh, territorial uh, investment instrument, we were able to uh, create another um, agreement between uh, 28 uh, municipalities, 28 local governments. Uh, and so I, I believe this is a good a good example of such a cooperation. Um, that we, as the municipalities, give a warranty for success, uh, and uh, therefore we we become the leader of that um, of that uh, unified instrument um, of that Dzierżoniów uh, Area Association. We are very happy to see that uh, our association has been and continues to be uh, appreciated because uh, for the past uh, 10 years, our work has been effective. Uh, thankfully, we were able to avoid any internal conflict. Mm, uh, so this is a very good uh, prognostic for uh, for the future, definitely. And we are, are able to continue to use that for the future. And here, you can see the benefits of um, the partnership project uh, projects in the Dzierżoniów Area Association which I think is also important for the topic of today's conference. Every now and then we have uh, uh, meetings uh, regarding that, and we, we want to see specific uh, benefits um, of our uh, cooperation. So uh, here, uh, here you can see um, these benefits on the slide, and uh, thankfully uh, there continue to be uh, more and more. I will take the, li the liberty to read through them. So first we have the greater institutional capacity and experience uh, on, of uh, participating actors. Uh, no mutual competition for the raising of common funds. Uh, next, uh, pooling potentials, resources, building social capital, creating a culture of cooperation. Uh, next, we have implementation of a wider range of investments. Uh, then uh, below that, we have implementation of projects, um, which without the support of partners would not have been possible to implement, for example, um, smaller uh, in smaller uh, municipalities. And uh, finally, we have greater, broader uh, impact. Mm, uh, we also have to uh, understand that the uh, projects impact quite, you know, both large uh, municipalities and the small ones. Uh, and thanks to that uh, cooperation, we are, uh, of course, um, able to continuously go bigger and grow bigger and impact um, a larger uh, area, physically larger. Even though there are some you know, smaller uh, actors in our association as well. Mm. Uh, thanks to the uh, number of inhabitants that we have in our uh, county, we are uh, definitely big enough to, to be that leader. Uh, so, uh, obviously, uh, no, we continue to, to grow as the association. Uh, uh, we also continue to strengthen uh, our position. Mm, uh, and I think it is quite obvious that, uh, that one has to strengthen um, one's own uh, competences. 
Mm, but in the case of the association, this is mm, especially uh, important, uh, more so than for uh, each particular uh, municipality. That, um, all of us have our competences and we are able to uh, develop them both as uh, specific units and as a, a joint well, collective. Uh, so uh, next we have um, uh, the uh, shared responsibility for local development. And again, each uh, municipality has their own uh, local strategies, uh, but uh, we all share the responsibility for it, and we are able to, uh, to, uh, to again, come together on, on that um, and so put in the effort to create a collective uh, strategy as uh, well. Um, I hope that the um, legislative aspect in Poland for local uh, governments um, uh, will also work in our favor when we um, discuss with our partners and the parliament because we would like to uh, implement that as well. Next, uh, we have the exchange of knowledge and experience, uh, delegation of competences to specialized uh, entities and units. Um, uh, obviously, uh, it is better to talk um, association to association than municipality to, uh, to municipality. You know, the, the more the merrier. Mm. And uh, mm, I believe that um, when the next uh, anniversary comes, we will definitely um, uh, review and summarize our um, work to date uh, again. And uh, next we have saving of funds, time and human resources. Uh, and our mm, uh, next we have uh, support for the staff of the local self-government uh, units. Uh, we receive uh, some uh, uh, expert uh, support, for example, uh, that share their uh, knowledge and experiences with uh, with us and with our uh, partners. And in in return uh, for that, uh, we with our partners definitely um, uh, can benefit financially as well. Uh, so today we are uh, together with you on this uh, conference. Uh, Tomasz has told me that, uh, well, uh, we are uh, one of the better partners for the uh, for the um, Union of uh, Polish, uh, for the uh, Association of Polish Cities. So uh, I'm very happy to, uh, to hear that, and uh, I hope that we will continue to be that good partner. Uh, so um, I see I have still five minutes uh, left. So just two last benefits here, greater uh, recognition of the region and reduced expenditure by the local governments. But I also want to move on uh, and uh, talk about some other joint uh, initiatives with the uh, Dzierżaniów uh, County. Uh, so um, uh, at the bottom left, you have the Dzierżaniów uh, Area Association, the logo uh, of that. We also have the, um, uh, uh, the water pipelines. Uh, we also have the communal uh, communal um, energy, the association of the municipalities of the Dzierżaniów uh, County. Uh, we, we also have this so-called Tri-City. Uh, we have the uh, Tourist Association uh, of um, the um, well, Góry Soviet in Polish, so the uh, the Abel Mountains, we would say. Uh, uh, the water pipelines I have already uh, mentioned. The um, well, the financial input of that association um, of that um, unit uh, also is not without um, importance here. No, we have 300 kilometers of those pipelines um, managed by this uh, by this company. Uh, the middle, uh, the middle logo at um, uh, at the top here uh, is the uh, the municipality and energy uh, sector. So this is the company that manages uh, that manages the energy supply uh, in our area. Mm. And uh, again, this is quite a, a vital actor, as, uh, just as the um, the water network. Uh, we uh, continue to uh, to want to develop that cooperation, uh, and uh, um, we also are waiting for some uh, for some further action, uh, so that we can uh, facilitate the energy transition. 
Związek Powiatowo-Gminny, który zajmuje się komunikacją. Jak powiedziałem tutaj o tym układzie geograficznym, mamy jedną komunikację, która obsługuje wszystkie nasze siedem gmin. No spółka też, ten związek też dysponuje dużym majątkiem, bo to jest 20 milionów złotych. Na dole kolejny związek gmin powiatu dzierżyńskiego ZGPD-7, to jest związek tak zwany śmieciowy, czyli gospodarkę odpadami. Ja mam nadzieję, że tak jak tutaj kolega mówił z Norwegii, dojdziemy do momentu, kiedy będzie, będziemy mieli ten układ zamknięty. Naprawdę to jest już blisko u nas, bo, bo praktycznie w rękach samorządowych i przedsiębiorców prywatnych jest cały ten układ, żeby tą gospodarkę dopiąć, czyli zbieranie, segregację odpadów, przetwarzanie tych odpadów, tworzenie paliwa alternatywnego i takim dopięciem będzie budowa spalarni, która będzie oczywiście ekologicznie, zgodnie z zasadami ochrony środowiska, spalała te śmieci tak zwane, które jeszcze są energetyczne i które po prostu spowodują, że będziemy tą gospodarkę śmieciową mieli jeszcze tańszą, a przy okazji jeszcze będziemy mieli tanią energię cieplną i elektryczną, bo mamy oczywiście Oczywiście też tutaj w naszym powiecie jednostki kogeneracyjne, które produkują póki co z biomasy prąd elektryczny i energię cieplną. Chcielibyśmy, żeby właśnie też można było to z tych odpadów śmieciowych produkować. No i, i tutaj dopełnienie to jest tak jakby gmin, Stowarzyszenie Turystyczne Gmin Bursowich. To jest ten znaczek po prawej stronie na dole. Oprócz tego, że jesteśmy powiatem i regionem, który jest dosyć uprzemysłowiony, Rolnictwa mamy mało, natomiast mamy też oczywiście turystykę, którą chcemy wpinać w te nasze działania wspólne i dlatego w ramach Stowarzyszenia Ziemia Dzierżyniowska również Stowarzyszenie Turystyczne Gmin Bursowych funkcjonuje. I proszę Państwa, ostatnie cztery slajdy, które pokazują, pokazują właśnie te działania już nie Stowarzyszenia konkretnie, a w tym miejscu wodociągi i kanalizacja Nasza spółka, ta wspólna, która właśnie w ostatnich 10 latach prowadziła taki program jak uporządkowanie gospodarki wodno-ściekowej na terenie gmin powiatu dzierżyńskiego. Pierwszy, drugi, teraz jest trzeci etap. Myślę, że te, na tą chwilę około 200 milionów złotych pozyskanych środków zewnętrznych na to, żeby tworzyć właśnie nowoczesne oczyszczalnie ścieków, stacje uzdatniania wody, linie przesyłowe, tak żeby faktycznie ta gospodarka wodno-ściekowa w powiecie była uporządkowana. To jest przykład działania naszej spółki, właśnie ta energia komunalna. Widzicie Państwo obiekty nasze użyteczności publicznej, szkoły, baseny czy, czy, czy obiekty na stadionie miejskim wyposażone w fotowoltaikę. Duży projekt właśnie dzięki temu, że zostaliśmy klastrem, powołaliśmy spółkę Energia Komunalna, pozyskaliśmy ze środków unijnych dwa lata temu tam ponad 12 milionów złotych, za co zostało wykonane 130 instalacji fotowoltaicznych, takich jak tutaj na zdjęciach widzicie. One są oczywiście różne, bo są, te, te są stosunkowo duże, ale są też mniejsze, ale 130 to jest duży efekt. Nie pamiętam jak teraz, ile to jest megawat zainstalowanych, chyba 2 megawat. Uh, as far as energy production goes, uh, this is an example of uh, this uh, municipal association. Uh, you can see spots on the map where buses, um, uh, where public tra uh, bus transport goes. So we also would like to move towards improving um, um, or introducing electric uh, buses. And the last thing uh, concerning tourism, of course, I do invite you to visit uh, the Jerzonov area. You can uh, come here, you uh, can uh, stay in one of our accommodation facilities, you can walk in the mountains, uh, not very high mountains, but at the same time, uh, very pleasant. So this is as far as uh, tourism uh, goes here. Uh, and here, uh, this uh, waste management company, which you can see on the map, are spots where well, in every municipality, you have uh, uh, plants uh, for, for collection and segregation of waste. So this, of course, increases our capacity as well as waste management goes. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for inviting me to this um, conference, to this forum, and for allowing me to present uh, the activities that are being done uh, here. 
Thank you very much, Mayor, for presenting this very broad uh, view uh, on uh, our different experiences and different cooperation um, uh, activities. Also, the area of trust was uh, very much uh, underlined in your presentation. This is a region where uh, development might be quite difficult, but it is, of course, very inspiring and very motivating. It also uh, proves that um, the examples um, show that this uh, cooperation can be very um, well, very multi-dimensional. So for the past 10 years, we've been learning and getting experiences uh, from our Norwegian partners, and we can see that an average uh, municipal area in Norway is part of even several such um, uh, inter-municipal association, uh, at least in the meaning of our Polish uh, association. Uh, associations, you have shown us uh, what it looks like in Dzierżoniu. One of quite interesting interesting areas as far as uh, waste and management uh, goes uh, were also some uh, were also other aspects of quite importance such as public transport uh, is well the next region a Norwegian region um, um, Ms. Johanna Solheim a political advisor to KS Enterprise uh, is with us and she's going to discuss municipal waste management in Norway she will talk about ownership roles uh, and uh, changes of co cooperation uh, requires more and more updates in an ever-changing world. Now, Johanna, can you hear us? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation and thank you for the kind uh, introduction. Um, I will quickly share my uh, presentation. Back. And um, please let me know quickly if uh, I should... Um, Tak, widzimy prezentację. There we go. Um, my name, yes. uh, yeah, I, um, my name is Johanna Solheim. I'm a political advisor in um, uh, KS Enterprises, uh, and I work specifically with the uh, waste uh, management uh, or the public waste management companies uh, all over Norway to represent their interests uh, politically. Um, today, I would like to talk about uh, just a little bit about our association, the Association of Norwegian Municipal Enterprises, a little bit about the public waste management uh, situation in Norway, because I think it's a very good case uh, for uh, even more intermunicipal collaboration. Uh, and then I would like to give you a few examples of um, collaboration uh, in the waste sector in Norway. Um, so Samfunsbedriftene, or the Association of Norwegian Municipal uh, Enterprises, is uh, the leading employers association and policy organization for municipal enterprises in Norway. We have almost 600 members. Uh, and our largest group, member groups are energy companies, waste management companies, ports, fire and rescue companies. Uh, but we also have members with a, a wide, within a wide range of other, um, other disciplines. Um, and we are located near KS, uh, who represent the owners of municipal enterprises. Um, or the municipalities, uh, basically, and uh, but Samfunsbedriftene represents uh, the municipal enterprises. Um, we have most of our members belong to one of these two uh, types of companies. We have um, interim municipal companies, and then we have uh, limited companies. Um, the intermunicipal companies are, can only be owned by uh, public uh, entities. So only municipalities, county municipalities, or other intermunicipal companies. Um, it's a separate legal entity and uh, the company will act as a legal person. Uh, it will have a board, which can be a professional board but it will also have a representative board on top of that, where the representatives from owner organizations will be placed. Um, there's an unlimited responsibility uh, and the companies cannot go bankrupt, but they can uh, and very often do own um, subsidiaries. 
While the limited companies, about half of our waste management members are also limited companies, they will be owned by shareholders, uh, but they can, so the difference is they can be owned by both public entities and also um, private companies. They have a limited personal liability and uh, they act as an independent legal entity. Uh, and uh, the limited companies, they uh, will have a board um, and a CEO, which reports to the board. They can establish and own their own um, subsidiaries and they do. Um, and this is a type of company that has had some um, uh, distrust perhaps because there's a myth that uh, there, uh, it's difficult to establish a good uh, political governance of these companies but uh, we argue that it only requires a very strong um, uh, ownership strategy uh, so that's uh, we think that good go political governance is, um, is possible and it, it's important for these companies um, the Norwegian uh, waste sector has um, uh, the Norwegian waste policy stems from um, mainly from European law uh, and from uh, Norwegian and local regulations. We had a new waste regulation in Norway uh, last year, and we're also um, uh, working on other very important waste uh, regulation uh, packages uh, this year and early next year. So this is a constantly changing landscape for um, the Norwegian uh, waste sector. And the, 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 the regulation is becoming more complex. The demands on the industry is becoming more complex. Um, so, and we're not, we're not, at the end, it's always going to be, we're always trying to become more circular, uh, more environmentally friendly. We have more and more ambitious uh, goals for the waste uh, sector in Norway. And I'm, uh, of course, also in, in Poland and in the rest of the EU. So that means that we're going from a sector that um, uh, has perhaps been low tech 20 years ago, and it's becoming a very high tech, very high um, uh, tech industry in Norway. Um, our members in waste management, we have 108 members, large and small. Um, we have 365 municipalities in Norway. So that means that many of our, our municipalities are represented or owners of, um, of our uh, uh, intermunicipal companies. Um, about half of our members are publicly owned corporations and half of them are intermunicipal companies. Uh, and just a little bit about the Norwegian waste sector. Um, in Norway, municipalities are the one uh, responsible for household waste, while household-like waste from private or public entities uh, will be handed on, handled on market terms. So that would not be a municipal responsibility. That means that waste from uh, kindergartens and schools uh, and um, uh, old people's homes uh, is a, not a municipal responsibility. Uh, while the EU regulations uh, relate to municipal waste, the concept of municipal waste, uh, that is a combination of household and household-like waste. So that's a challenge for the Norwegian waste policy. Um, our main objective uh, in 2035, the target for, of material recovery uh, is 65%. Um, it's going to be hard to reach. Uh, our members are striving for these goals in different ways. Norway is a long country. We have um, very differing uh, demographic and geographic conditions throughout. So it's not a one size fits all. Um, where are we now? Are we reaching these goals? This, the, the, the graph on the left side uh, shows where the Norwegian um, uh, municipalities are handling um, uh, the material recovery rate in, from, of household waste in Norway. And uh, the graph on the right side are the goals that we, uh, the EU goals that we are uh, aiming to reach. 
So it does not look like we're going to be uh, at 55 by 25, 55% uh, material recovery by um, 2025, which is next year. Uh, and it also looks like, I mean, the challenge is only going to keep uh, getting bigger. So um, our members are striving to reach these goals uh, and to keep up. Um, the re how do we reach, how do we get closer to those targets? It requires technology. It requires uh, know-how. And we also argue that it requires even more intermunicipal collaboration than what we have uh, today. Um, I'm going to show you some of examples of the ways that our members are um, using technology, using know-how and using collaboration to become, to get closer to those uh, material recovery targets. Um, we have many measures uh, to increase waste sorting. Many of them are very technologically um, uh, heavy, to be quite honest, and expensive. Uh, we have different pay-as-you-throw mechanisms, which requires um, identity uh, um, uh, control of uh, who throws what <laughs> and measuring uh, equipment uh, distributed throughout the waste net. Uh, we have um, uh, municipalities that use ID chips uh, for the residents to use uh, their communal bins. Uh, and we also, um, our members also experiment with different collect collection frequency models uh, in order to, for example, um, encourage increased uh, sorting of the waste by collecting mixed waste, waste fractions more rarely. Um, we also have many members that are using different measures to increase uh, reuse. Uh, so, um, at recycling stations, there are many who um, have uh, different types of reuse stalls or containers. Um, we have some members who are actually establishing separate secondhand uh, stores um, in order to increase the reuse of uh, what is considered waste by some inhabitants can be a treasure for, uh, for others. and. Um, and we also have uh, different uh, projects going on uh, where um, the construction materials are being reused uh, to, with much uh, success. But th these uh, initiatives also require um, volumes, they re require technology and they require, um, uh, it, it costs money. <laughs> so, um, so these are also have to be prioritized by uh, municipalities. Um, we have two uh, fully automated waste sorting facilities in Norway. One of them sadly is not uh, functioning at this moment. They had a quite a big fire a few years ago and they're rebuilding. Um, that's the Ivar uh, sorting plant. Um, and, but there are also several more sorting uh, plants that are being planned uh, throughout Norway. We also think this will be required if we're going to reach the material recovery goals. Um, and one of our plants that are the, the plant that is functioning can sort plastics using different uh, in different uh, qualities that have a value at the um, uh, in the circular value chain further down. So um, uh, this is something that we think we will see more of, but it's a very costly um, technology, uh, it's the big uh, plants that um, to handle this waste. So it requires uh, collaboration and that it requires the economy of scale to make this a viable uh, option. Um, we have, uh, as I mentioned earlier, many of our uh, members are uh, collaborating um, or participating in intermunicipal companies um, in order to uh, reach uh, these goals. Um, but we have taken this one step further in, uh, in Norway. Uh, and I want to show you um, an example of a, uh, a collaboration between intermunicipal co uh, corporations in the waste uh, 
in the public waste sector in the middle of, uh, of Norway. Um, this illustration is, um, um, it's, it's to represent the idea of each municipality having their own waste uh, corporation. There, um, there are many kings on many, many hills. And as I mentioned, we have 365 municipalities in Norway, and we have a population of uh, about five and a half uh, a million people. Um, and as I was mentioning, waste management is becoming increasingly complicated. And if each municipality was to solve these complex tasks individually, it would be um, uh, impossible. It would be, we would not be reaching the goals if we did not collaborate. But um, in the mid region of Norway, Sesammen has taken this uh, to the next uh, level. In uh, 2012, uh, they started exploring uh, the possibility of establishing one of those mixed waste sorting plants in the region. Uh, and they were also facing a stronger national and EU um, waste regulation. So now, there are 10 waste companies, 10 intramunicipal waste companies, which are owned by a total of 78 municipalities. Um, and they cover about a quarter of Norway's uh, area and 736,000 uh, uh, inhabitants. Um, and they are now collaborating. I can show you the map of the, this is the middle region of Norway. You can see it's a a big chunk of our of our area and there are many those companies that are represented by the different colors on the map are different but they're working and developing together in order to become uh to be able to meet the challenges that we are facing um so what do they collaborate on they're collaborating on the standardization of their infrastructure they have professional networks for example within communications within finance uh, within recycling stations in order to give their employees um, uh, better working conditions and better uh, working environments. They have, they're collaborating on purchasing. Um, they're collaborating on uh, recently new challenges like sustainability reporting. Uh, and they're collaborating on communication uh, campaigns. So instead of solving these challenges 10 different ways in 10 different uh, intermunicipal com companies, they can do it at once. So they're pooling their resources and they're getting the benefits of an economy of scale and they're attracting more skilled workers because they want to work in a bigger uh, environment with more um, better or more professional networks. Um, so with that, I would just like to say, uh, and say summon is just one of many uh, examples as waste collection is becoming more and more technical and more complex. It makes sense for municipalities and the intermunicipal companies to, uh, to collaborate and say summon is one. We've, we're seeing similar um, uh, collaborations in other regions in Norway uh, as well. Um, so that's, thank you so much for uh, the invitation and to talk about um, um, the to intermunicipal uh, collaboration. Uh, thank you very much for this very uh, broad and very competent uh, presentation. Uh, uh, you have showed many, uh, many different uh, subjects uh, in many different uh, areas, um, uh, which uh, shows uh, definitely how much uh, can be done. Uh, sometimes uh, we can do uh, more than we can uh, imagine um, uh, if we think about the traditional uh, waste uh, management. Um, another um, uh, area that is definitely predestined to, uh, to enter municipal cooperation um, is uh, tourism. Um, uh, tourists uh, get to a specific destination uh, and they uh, obviously um, visit many, uh, many monuments, uh, many uh, attractions, and they expect a complex, uh, complex offer, for example, from a, um, uh, from a um, uh, travel uh, bureau. So if we are talking about uh, tourism, uh, 
Uh, we have to talk not only about uh, managing the Pokażemy przykład, który ma już dłuższą historię, bo Poznańska Lokalna Organizacja Turystyczna to już 21 lat działalności, a więc długi okres, ale także okres, w którym organizacja wciąż się rozwija, podejmuje nowe tematy i powiększa liczbę członków. W tym stowarzyszeniu jest partnerstwo nie tylko And we have also developed a partnership not only between public administration with business, but also with NGOs, with the uh, universities, um, higher education facilities. And we have over 70 partners, and I'm calling them partners because um, uh, each and every association that we collaborate with has a, uh, has a say, has a voice uh, that is uh, listened. Um, our uh, association encompasses uh, the majority of the Poznan uh, metropolitan area and uh, also um, uh, the area around it, uh, which uh, obviously also entails the uh, the intermunicipality um, uh, co cooperation. So now I would like to ask Mr. Piotr ba uh, Basinski from the Poznan Local Tourist Organization, who deals with this very um, uh, area of cooperation that uh, encompasses more than one municipality. So, Piotr, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, hello, everybody. Mm, please um, let me share the presentation. I hope it's going to work. Uh, and so, ladies and gentlemen, together for tourism, this is the, uh, the um, slogan that I decided to put uh, in as a title of my presentation. And I wanted to uh, show you that um, uh, just as these uh, young tourists here uh, in Pobiedziska uh, on, on the photo, um, uh, uh, we can act like them and we can uh, work together to develop that, um, you know, that uh, tourism um, on different levels. Um, of cooperation between different units, um, and so I will tell you what that looks like. So, uh, like I said, we are a um, local tourist association here in Poznan. We have been established in 2003, so that makes it 21 years of cooperation as of right now. And uh, our goal uh, um, um, is first and foremost the promotion of Poznan and the Poznan uh, agglomeration, and secondly, uh, supporting the development of the uh, tourist market. Uh, the photo that you see here is a is a um, bridge uh, that we have in Poznan uh, that goes um, uh, among the treetops. And this uh, this bridge is also a symbol of a bridge between units um, from different uh, disciplines, different areas. Uh, currently, our association has about 70 uh, members. Um, that come from different worlds, um, literally, because we have, uh, among those members, we have local government units, uh, but we also have uh, hotels and restaurants. Uh, also, uh, various types of cultural institutions uh, led by um, the museums in Poznan and around Poznan that are very uh, popular. Uh, we have travel uh, agencies that uh, bring in tourists uh, to our uh, area and um, and uh, allow them to use our uh, tourist offer to the fullest and enjoy it uh, to the fullest. And then uh, finally, we have various different types of uh, companies, like for example, the International um, Poznan uh, Trade Center, like the Wabica uh, Airport in uh, in Poznan, or uh, Lech Poznan, which is a football team um, here in, in, in the city. Uh, so uh, you, you can see that our association um, um, grows very uh, very rapidly and very uh, very broad. Uh, but of course, uh, the primary area that, that we deal with is uh, tourist uh, uh, tourism, and obviously um, one of the most important strategic partners uh, of ours is the city of Poznań itself. Uh, but also the uh, the Poznań province, uh, which consists of 17 municipalities around Poznań, uh, that um, add in. Um, a, um, uh, a, uh, a lot to the whole tourist offer um, of our association, but not only, uh, also um, in, including open air um, and tourist attractions, like uh, open air museums, for example. Uh, so we can, uh, uh, we are trying to be as uh, diverse as possible in our uh, in our offer in our mode of, uh, of operation, uh, because we have to remember it is not uh, uh, obligatory for tourists to trust us. 
us uh, up front. We have to work for that trust. Uh, and we are uh, happy to see that more and more uh, municipalities um, join our organization. But of course, the um, uh, the decedents of, uh, of, of those governments, the local governments of those municipalities, have to see that we are uh, a trustworthy and uh, well-operating organization. So far, this has been working very well. Um, uh, and I'm talking specifically about the, um, let's say, um, free trial period of, um, uh, of cooperation that every um, uh, that uh, every uh, member gets, um, because at the beginning of, of the cooperation, we meet with each uh, uh, interested partner, uh, we talk with them, and we say, well, okay, but now let's try to uh, to cooperate for uh, six months um, uh, without any formal uh, obligations on paper, and we will see uh, how that cooperation works out. And if after those uh, six months uh, we see that this cooperation is um, going in the right direction, then uh, we formalize this um, uh, cooperation. And in the in the recent years, uh, several local governments uh, have gone have undergone that uh, first uh, free trial period, and then uh, the actual formalized um, cooperation that was uh, uh, that uh, evolved naturally from the uh, from the um, first period. We are very happy to see that. Uh, so, like I said, we uh, cooperate with uh, many uh, units of local uh, governments, um, and we have uh, various different types of certifications uh, uh, of the Poznan County tourists attractions. Um, uh, this is what uh, started my journey and the uh, organization. At the time, we saw a need for strengthening our uh, organization and uh, a need for uh, talking about the area around Poznan, because Poznan as a city is is a natural magnet for uh, for tourists in our area, uh, but uh, people uh, were not aware um, about the attractions around it, uh, and so we decided to become a um, sort of spokesperson, spokes organization for the whole region, um, and uh, currently I am the spokesperson um, in the flesh. Uh, we currently uh, support and um, um, cooperate with um, uh, local governments around Poznan, like I said, and with um, uh, various museums, uh, theme parks, education centers, and recreation centers. Uh, and our objectives are well raising standards um, of the uh, provided services, but also promotions and um, integration. And so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, in the recent um, edition of that certification um, uh, event, uh, almost 50 facilities, 47 to be exact, were awarded that uh, that certification provided by our uh, uh, by our uh, organization. Uh, we have uh, taken ac into account what role a specific attraction or, 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 or facility played in the region, and we also looked at, uh, you know, how to um, convince the um, the owners and the uh, decedents of specific organizations that uh, it is worth um, fulfilling the criteria for that uh, certification, you know, what benefit that would bring them. Mm, we wanted to be sure that uh, if a tourist visits uh, a specific facility, that, uh, that they will be well uh, taken care of, that they will be, um, you know, uh, given the, uh, the proper service. Uh, will uh, parking places be accessible? Um, uh, will the uh, will the facility uh, have proper accessibility for um, uh, people with uh, various disabilities, for example? Um, uh, so we uh, took all of that into account when uh, providing uh, when granting those uh, certifications, and that in turn um, stands for additional prom promotion for a specific uh, area or uh, facility. And, we, uh, and uh, therefore, the whole standard has been uh, raised as a result. So, uh, next thing, we have the um, uh, the treasure hunt, uh, uh, so to speak, uh, because we have um, we have uh, popularized the uh, the quest method of uh, of outdoor tourism. 
specifically, as you can see here on the photo, we have a group of kids that are on a quest, you know, somewhere outdoors. And this is uh, a very versatile method. You can um, uh, you can adapt it to, to many different areas. So we uh, decided to look for uh, for uh, some different projects that will be um, uh, possible to realize not only in like one or two municipalities, but um, uh, in the whole area that we uh, operate on. Uh, so. Now, once we decided on that, uh, we moved on to uh, trainings for authors of those quests. Uh, trainings uh, encompassed uh, also various NGOs, and the participants could learn uh, what this form uh, of tourism uh, looks like, how it works, uh, and so on, and how um, a specific quest routes can be created. And so, um, uh, based on that, we have had um, consultations, and then the whole um, marketing and promotion campaign uh, um, has started and through this um, this type of tourism. We integrate many different local governments because if a tourist visits one um, municipality and decides to go on this kind of quest uh, and they like it, then uh, there is a high chance that, we, uh, that they will stay in, in the region and when they visit a different municipality, they will also uh, undergo a quest. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, those quests are, uh, let's say, kind of competitions with awards at the end. And the next um, uh, type uh, that we have is uh, is the memo game. I think uh, many of you are familiar with this kind of game. Mm, uh, so we decided to incorporate um, mm, monuments and uh, uh, various dif uh, uh, different um, uh, areas that, that are worthy of visit uh, in our region. And so this game was printed, it was then sold um, uh, in our organization, and this is an example of a, um, a joint promotional product that can accompany the, you know, the most popular uh, tourist attractions in our uh, region. You know, this allows us to also combine uh, the most popular uh, attractions with the uh, lesser known ones. We can um, put them all into one game, and so when somebody plays it, you know, they will be able to you know, to see, let's see, uh, uh, let's say the palace in Rogalin, which is a very well-known um, attraction. They will be able uh, to see some other, uh, some other place or monument, and uh, perhaps take an interest uh, in that. Uh, this game also has a map, um, uh, and it combines promotion and play. So next we have uh, the Poznań Tourist Card. Uh, it has been introduced in many uh, different areas. And, uh, we have uh, the next edition of that card right now. And uh, the way it works is that if you buy this card, you either have a free uh, admission to certain um, uh, certain places like museums, for example, or you have a very big uh, discount. Uh, we have um, introduced uh, we have introduced a mechanism in which this card is valid for one day ex uh, one day extra. Uh, so um, uh, you can use it for three days uh, within the uh, the Poznan city limits for the uh, attractions here, but then it still has um, uh, one extra day of valid, uh, validity for you to stay in the region and visit some, uh, something outside uh, of the city. And the next uh, program. Uh, here uh, is uh, being a tourist in your own city. Um, uh, the border between uh, a city inhabitant and a city tourist uh, becomes more and more uh, blurred uh, because um, the inhabitants of uh, towns around Poznan, well, uh, they frequent the city uh, pretty much on the daily, so they are virtually like the, uh, the uh, inhabitants of Poznan, but uh, at the same time, they want to uh, take advantage of the uh, attractions that are available in the city. Mm, and so through the uh, power of local government um, information, be it platforms or any uh, any form of uh, information uh, distribution, we spread the uh, quote-unquote tourist gossip. Mm, uh, and this is a series of uh, thematic uh, promotional articles. And throughout three years, we were able to compose 36 such articles and the um, um, uh, the total number uh, of printed copies was over 3.45 million, and we're talking about copies that uh, that actually reached the inhabitants and made an, uh, an impact. So we have uh, definitely prepared those um, uh, articles with a specific theme in mind for each 
And uh, if, a, if a given inhabitant or tourist decided to follow that article, uh, they were able to take advantage not only of the um, attractions in their own uh, town or, mun or municipality, but also the ones in Poznan and around. We have uh, collaborated with uh, local newspapers, for example, uh, and the uh, the effect was was very very successful. We are very happy uh, with uh, what we were able to achieve. Here uh, you can see uh, the sample newspaper sheets of the uh, of the tourist gossip articles. Next, we have our tour salon. Uh, so this is um, uh, this is our um, our stall at uh, at tourism fairs that happens regular uh, regularly and that we also participate in regularly as um, as a um, uh, as an uh, exhibitor. And what is important is that um, this is a joint stand or joint stall, um, and our efforts are also uh, joint. If we, uh, if we want to continue that uh, that collaboration with uh, with various uh, municipalities, uh, and also our publications are um, are joint. Uh, our, uh, the competitions and events that we organize, we do uh, we do all of that uh, together. So this uh, allows for an image, you know, of a coherent uh, tourist area that is uh, attractive to tourists simply uh, and uh, well tourists are, are not really interested in uh, administrative borders they uh, they simply want to come to uh, to an area and see uh, what is uh, uh, what is fun to do around it the uh, next thing that we have uh, are the so-called Sunday guides of Poznan County and again these are a thematic uh, guide series that uh, show a complex uh, overview of a um, uh, of the tourist uh, offer of a specific municipality or area and again um, this is simply a, a simple and accessible way of spreading information uh, we as the tourist organization have also a, um, a tourist information system, a tourist information point, uh, but we also co uh, collaborate with municipalities on that. And so uh, what does this collaboration entail? Well, we have different uh, trainings. We have different uh, study visits uh, during uh, which we learn about new attractions that uh, continue to sprout in our region, uh, but it also um, entails uh, the spreading or dissemination of uh, publications, uh, which uh, we can can be a middleman for, uh, for example, we can um, uh, we can deliver a specific publication from one municipality to to a different area through our uh, organization. Uh, another aspect, of course, is the sale of um, uh, souvenirs. And we can also uh, kind of do the job for the uh, for the local uh, governments here because obviously local governments cannot uh, legally sell things, so we do that uh, for them in this case. Mm. Next, uh, we have the Metropolitan Tourist Information System, um, um, and uh, we have uh, devised a, uh, a kind of uh, blueprint for it, which, uh, which works definitely in our municipality and in other areas as well. Uh, next, we have the institute in uh, Skrinki. This is a um, uh, a small town, Skrinki, and this uh, combines uh, different um, different areas and, and uh, different aspects of tourism uh, um, as well. So here, here, for example, you have the culinary trail or the trail of uh, of the tastes of uh, Poznan County. It also um, provides a space um, for a forum of the uh, Wielkopolska Regionalists, and it is a, a tourist promotion at uh, at events. Now, what I want to mention, uh, um, coming slowly to an end of my presentation, is the uh, film titled uh, Tarapaty 2, or in, uh, in English, The Trouble to well, Part 2 in this case. Um, so this is a uh, family movie that we decided to use to promote our region as well. Here uh, you can see a photo from the from the uh, movie premiere, uh, and that movie premiere that, that release was also accompanied by a book. Uh, you, can, uh, you can see the illustration from that book uh, here. Uh, this illustrates the uh, the Guretsky uh, Lake, the uh, Pushtukovo uh, town. Uh, we have collaborated with those municipalities to show those tourist attractions, open air attractions in this case, uh, so that everybody who watched that movie uh, also got the uh, the urge to visit the area. 
Another uh, quite unique project is uh, the uh, collaboration with the uh, Festival on the Road, or specifically the uh, the Objeje Literary uh, Festival. Uh, this uh, this uh, festival panders to a very specific kind of audience, um, uh, and the um, the visitors of that festival come from uh, from far away uh, uh, to go to uh, to every. Uh, edition, so mm, mm, uh, they can, of course, learn about uh, literature during this festival. Uh, but uh, we use that uh, opportunity to also promote our uh, our region, specifically Moshina, Oborniki, Tarnovo, Podgórne, and Śrem. These are the four municipalities that are involved. Uh, finally, we have the Polish um, uh, tourist brands. Uh, we have eleven of those in uh, uh, in the whole of Poland, uh, and we have our own here in um, in. Poland as well. What is important here is that we are a metropolitan organization. The attractions that we have here, the potential of, uh, of the municipalities that cooperate um, uh, with us, uh, and the fact that we you know, um, uh, complement one uh, uh, another allows us to create this kind of synergy uh, and allows us to uh, to get uh, additional uh, support and subsidy from the ministry uh, that is directed specifically to uh, to um, the units awarded this tourism brand. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, and this bell that you see here is in the Arkady Fiedler uh, Museum uh, in Pushtikovo. So let, uh, let me ring that bell and uh, invite you with the sound here. Thank you. Thank you very much for this presentation, sharing very different dimensions of this cooperation and also very interesting um, practical things about it. Some um, introductory uh, period that you have. Uh, which is uh, common during the beginning of such cooperation, and that there are such products and services that can prove themselves um, useful and uh, implementation ready. So uh, this is the uh, Poznan um, local tourist organization. Thank you very much again um, for your insight, and I wish you more interesting activities. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for uh, a number of inspiration and practical examples, both from Norway and from uh, our uh, Polish uh, playground, um, uh, for example, from Dzerzhonyov or from uh, Poznań. It all shows how very important trust is and how important it is to uh, cooperate. Now, um, Executive Director uh, Borowski, if you could please uh, summarize this meeting. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, all the interventions are were extremely uh, inspiring, and all the practical examples, they teach us uh, the most. Uh, but I wanted to point to some uh, more cross-sectional contexts of uh, the solutions. The representative of Norway has uh, shown a number of legal solutions that are being applied in Norway as far as institutionalization of uh, inter-municipal cooperation goes. Mm. This is very similar in Poland, uh, but uh, the focus in Poland is uh, set rather towards some of the solutions that I have not noticed in Norway. It's rather about institutionalizing a constant or steady cooperation uh, that is a project uh, that is not project based. Jarek Komża mentioned that uh, the majority of Polish uh, cooperations are rather project based due to the fact that you can get some dedicated funds for the implementation of such projects. However, we would need more steady cooperation so that we can plan our development together and to be able to provide municipal services uh, together. This second option is uh, there in uh, Poland because uh, inter-municipal um, associations um, allow for that, but they are quite rigid and uh, they have been created in such a way that they take over 
uh, the tasks uh, of the um, local government units. So a unit which enters into such an agreement or into a such uh, intermunicipal association, uh, when they do it, uh, they stop uh, being responsible for a given task because it's the new legal entity who is responsible for it. At the moment, we have only one such association which um, shows us this uh, metropolitan uh, cooperation. This is uh, uh, the Silesian uh, metropoly. Uh, but it also shows us with the passage of time that there are a lot of challenges faced by, by this uh, particular association. In order to um, get get rid of them or to, to get by, we need some legislative changes which are not yet uh, possible. So we are now working on more flexible solutions so that we can have more steady cooperation in urban functional areas. I also wanted to point to one another fact, which is that in Norway, as far as I understood, there was a survey checking in which areas municipalities are cooperating. Please pay attention that at the very beginning, you have emergency management centers. At the moment, we are uh, now um, passing uh, the law on the protection of uh, civil um, inhabitants uh, and civil protection, as well as um, Emergency um, Activities Act. So. In the nearest future, we will have to um, create such structures and pass such laws. In some areas, it would be advisable to do it together, especially by smaller municipalities, which lay in the functional area of either a town or a bigger city. So this could bring mutual benefit to all those stakeholders, especially if we could uh, increase um, all those uh, emergency and, and protection measures, thanks to all the emergency uh, management centers that could face all those um, challenges. We have an example of such a uh, center that is operating around a big city. It was organized um, several years ago around Opola. Uh, it was done with um, rural counties and with the municipalities around Opola. So we will try to promote this particular example in the future and we'll also try to encourage the uh, Ministry of the Interior uh, and Administration that is going to continue work on the implementation of uh, all those legislative changes so that these solutions become more uh, popular and, and introduced, of course. So thank you very much for your interesting interventions. Thank you to the Norwegian side for all the uh, inspiring uh, input and have a good afternoon on this Thursday. So, Mr. Porowski, thank you for summarizing. Thank you for participating in this meeting. There are a lot of questions. We tried to respond to them in the chat. Um, there were also quite uh, specific uh, questions. Um, if you need uh, more insight, visit cwt.info website. Uh, the recording of this seminar will also be posted on the Association of Polish Cities website, so you will be able to get back to it. So, um, thank you very much for uh, spending this time with us, and I also want to inform you that on the 12th of December, there will be at another seminar as part of the Local Development Forum, and the subject is going to be an important one. We are going to talk about uh, innovativeness and creativity in public administration. Today, uh, we expect uh, 
from the public administration not only to take care of uh, statutory tasks, but they are also very often responsible for solving problems. And there are many of them. They require innovative approaches, creativity that not always is um, associated with um, local government uh, units uh, and authorities. So we will talk about it, about innovation, creativity, um, 12th of uh, December at 11, you will soon get an invite, so um, uh, please uh, join us in December. Thank you very much uh, uh, for all those uh, uh, watching uh, this uh, streamed uh, uh, forum. Uh, thank you for our, to our Norwegian partners as well as to the technical team and to our sign language and English language. Uh, interpreters. Thank you very much and have a good afternoon. And as always, please fill in our survey so that we know what we should pay attention to because we get a lot of inspiration from those surveys. You can find it in the chat. Thank you very much.